In this tutorial, we're going to be looking at Z index. Now it's easiest just to illustrate Z index and Z index refers to when two elements overlap, which element is going to be on top of the other element. So I'm going to set up three divs here and they're all going to be inside of my red box. We'll so have green box, blue box, and let's call this one yellow box. And each of these divs will set up to have 100 by 100. So I'm going to delete all this positioning we worked with before and kind of clean this up a little bit. So I have blue box, green box, and we want each one to be 100 by 100. So I'll copy this one more time to create our yellow box. And we'll come over here and save and refresh. Let me actually switch this to yellow really quick. And we'll save and refresh our HTML page here. I've actually closed mine down, so we'll relaunch this HTML file and take a look at how this works. So Again, each of these is just regular old divs. They're all child of the red, and this is their natural stacking order. So I'm going to position each of these elements with absolute positioning so that they overlap. So I'll start up here with the top element, which is so it goes green, blue, yellow. And uh, I'm actually going to rearrange this so this is in the same order as well so I don't get myself confused. So green, blue, then yellow down here. And we will position each of these absolutely. So I'm going to say position absolute. And I'll say top 50. And I'll say left 50. Need to make sure I do the unit of measure. That's always required unless the value is 0. You always have to have a unit of measure. So if I save and refresh here, this green box I would expect to move down and over 50. Because it got removed from the document flow, both of the other divs moved up where it used to be. So we expect that behavior now. Now let's move the red box right over here so it overlaps. So we'll take the, or not the red box, rather the blue box. I'm just going to copy this position and paste it down here. And I'll move this one 100 pixels instead of 50. And we'll save and refresh. And now you can see the blue box is overlapping this one. And because we used absolute positioning here, the yellow box went up to where it used to be because this is now removed from the document flow and this is removed from the document flow. And lastly, we'll take the yellow box and move it down here as well. So we'll uh, just paste that same rule we have in here. And we'll move this one 150 pixels down. And we'll move this one 150 pixels down. And save and refresh. And now the yellow box is there. So now you can see we have this issue where we have three divs, they overlap, and I may want to alter the order which, in which these things stack. So the default is just the tag that's declared latest in code is on top of the previous tag. So that's kind of the default stacking order. But let's say, what if I want this green box to be in front of the blue box? And in order to do that, we have to use what's called Z index. So I would come up in here to the green box and the property is z dash index and the value here is not actually a pixel value it's just a whole number so i'm just going to say 10 to start things off so we'll save here and come back and refresh and now you can see that 10 does in fact or the green box moves in front of the blue box because it has a higher z index value than blue so if i wanted blue to be in front of both of these, it would just have to have a, va a value higher than 10. So if I come to the blue box, then I'll give it a Z index, Z dash index, and I'll just say 11 here and save and refresh. You can see now blue, in fact, comes in front of both of these because it has the highest Z index, et cetera, et cetera. So Z index is a way you can use to kind of control that 3D or the stacking nature of overlapping elements. And they're always just whole numbers. Um, you can, in fact, do negative Z indexes to push something behind something else as well. The only thing I would recommend when you're doing Z indexes is don't stack your Z, in Z indexes with 10, 11, 12, because then you introduce the problem if what, what if later on I come in and I need to add another div in between these two, and I have this one as 10 and this one as 11. You cannot do 10.5. It has to be a whole number. So what you would have to do is you would have to then go change everything. I'd have to change this one to 9, and I'd have to change this one to 10, and then add my new one in between, or et cetera, et cetera. So when you're doing your Z indexes, I would recommend just building a little bit of a buffer. So start one out at 5, do the next one at 10, do the next one at 15. That way, if you do need to add something in between 
five and 10, you have five numbers that you can do that. So you can then alter that later. And that's the basics of Z-index.